Okay, so I will control myself. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, now we are moving to Poland, which is far, far from uh, um, US uh, collection or Latin, because uh, I would like to uh, speak about Duchess um, Isabella uh, Czartoryska. Uh, she, she was an amazing Polish uh, woman whose work goes far beyond uh, the epoch in which she lived. Uh, her life and her activities fall on the second half of the 18th century and the first half of the 19th century, that is the decline of the Enlightenment period and the birth of the Romantic era. She is recognized as the wife of Adam Kazimierz, a prominent member of Familia Czartoryski and a mother of Adam Jerzy, the founder of the Hotel Lambert in Paris, a political faction of Polish exiles after the disaster of the November uprising in 1830. During her long life, she played a dynamic role in social, diplomatic and political circles in Poland. Even if Duchess uh, was not particularly well educated, she stood out from other Polish women aristocrats by her uh, independence of judgments, brilliance, mind's uh, openness, uh, and vastness of various uh, interests. Associated with the activity of Czartoryska is also an important date in Polish museology because uh, she owes her fame as the founder of the first Polish historical museum. Nevertheless, uh, in aim to understand the uniqueness um, of Czartoryska uh, uh, work, it is necessary to present it in a wider context of the history of antiquities collecting in Poland studies about which provide an important insight into the role of broadly understood antiquity in the elite culture of Central and Eastern Europe. It is because the interest of antique art and culture was one, uh, was one of the elements of searching Polish identity, at once confirming an affiliation to the same cultural sphere as Italy, France, or Great Britain. The history of uh, ant uh, antiquities collecting in Poland can be divided into three main phases. However, due to the turbulent history uh, of Poland, most of collections uh, were scattered, looted, or transferred, and a large part of the artifacts is now lost. Nowadays, to retrace the history, reconstruct their content, and finally estimate their value for the Polish culture, we must often rely solely on the written testimonies and collection records, uh, sometimes fortunately, collections of antiquities uh, were merely a part of the larger decorative program of noblemen's residences. This specific phenomenon occurred in the second phase uh, with uh, the turn of 18th and 19th century, uh, when uh, several Polish aristocratic families wished to commission artistic vision of the ancient world, founding, uh, founding gardens à uh, with imitation of ancient ruins, buildings, and tombs, together with collections of original antiquities, as well as antique-like copies. Polish gardens were the reflection of the same trend which was born in Britain, then developed in France, Germany, and Russia. In Poland, such parks were created in Warsaw uh, and beyond, uh, as you can see here, just several examples. Duchess uh, uh, Isabella Czartoryska uh, ar arranged um, one in Puławy uh, as well. And it took place at the very special moment in the history of Poland. The third partition resulting in Poland Poland's loss of independence uh, and the uh, abandonment uh, of Warsaw by the last Polish king made the capital to lose its prominent role. The cultural life was uh, decentralized, focus was switched, switched, switched to province. In Puławy, Czartoryska created the animated center of culture and arts development called New Athens. Uh, assembling around her an incredible team of artists, writers, and well-educated officers. References to the past was, uh, was the main yardstick of the decorative program of the entire foundation, in the expansion and remodeling of which the most famous architects were involved. Among them, Christian Piotr Eigner was the most important individual. 
After studies in Italy, he was one of the first architects who applied the decorative forms of classicism in Poland, being inspired directly by Roman architecture. His later works were uh, enriched by Romantic influence as well. His experience and skills allowed him to construct in Puławe several buildings referring to antiquity. Some construction uh, alluding in form, style, uh, or detail to the um, architecture of Campania of Latium, such as copy of Sarcophagus Scipio Barbatus and garden gate uh, in the form on the, of uh, Roman arch, a fountain of pan, uh, uh, or a series of, of caves with ancient or ancient-like sculptures exposed both inside and outside, gave an illusion of an ancient landscape. But uh, uh, two, of, uh, two of the buildings were faithful imitations of ancient monuments. The Temple of the Sibyl, uh, an exact copy of the Rand Temple in Tivoli, uh, uh, whereas the location of the building on the high bank of the Vistula River <coughs> reinforced the likeness of the original. The second building was a church, uh, a smaller copy uh, of the Pantheon. Uh, however, the entire residence, park and buildings were just a backdrop of Tartoryska passion for collecting. One of the buildings, the Temple uh, of Sibyl, was invented as a place to cultivate the national past. From the very beginning, the leading principle of the exposition was to recall the glorious uh, history of Poland by presenting uh, relics, monuments, and memorabilia related to Polish heroes, kings, and generals. The sentence above the entrance door, the past for the future, was the best <coughs> illustration of the goal of the Temple of Sibyl, to keep the memory of Poland in the darkness period of captivity. That's why the the building was called also simply Temple of Memory. Uh, already during the, its construction, uh, the concept of another pavilion uh, was born. If the Temple of Sibyl was to be devoted to Poland, the new building would be dedicated to, all, uh, to the memorabilia of all countries and all uh, nations. Uh, the, uh, the, the form, the, this Gothic house, the form um, uh, was due to Piotr Eigner. However, the ideas of the exposition uh, uh, was, made, was created by Czartoryska herself. In her letter to his son, she described her concept as follows. We will build it with different uh, debris uh, that I picked up on site. I also have some who uh, come from France. I have some from Scotland and England. She had also a very precise idea uh, of how the monument should be uh, exhibited. Small objects, both uh, books and engravings, were displayed in rooms inside the house. Much more original was the exposition, uh, so in, uh, in the, the rooms inside the house. Much more original was the exposition of bigger stone fragments and architectural um, uh, elements embedded in external walls. The process of the creation is well illustrated by her words. Uh, we fix in the wall outside old stones removed from various buildings, houses, bridges, reputed either for their age or thanks to illustrious person who made them famous. The concept of such lapidarium was absolutely unique in Polish collection of that time. The nine walls were called with the names of famous persons or places. The one was called simply Roman. It was here when various ancient fragments were exposed, mostly fragments of reliefs and statues, but also vases uh, and lamps. Now, uh, it, um, almost the exposition almost disappeared. Uh, and it can be reconstructed uh, just thanks to the written and iconographic sources as these drawings of different walls uh, in the houses. But what kind of monuments they were? Uh, inversely to the most of the Polish aristocrats, Czartoryska was never been an enthusiast of impressive sculptures of vases. In England, visiting the Lord's uh, Blundell collection, one of the most famous uh, and precious at that time, she described it, uh, uh, she described it 
by using such expression as a, a pile of tasteless things, a lot of bad statue, uh, a lot of so-called ancient sarcophagi, etc. She appreciated much more objects seen in some collection in Glasgow, as stones found in, uh, in the wall, roof tiles marked by legions, uh, tombstones without decoration, an altar dedicated to a goddess named uh, eponym, etc. So as we clearly uh, infer, Czartoryska had, had much more curiosity about uh, Roman provincial antiquities than fascination for Greek and Roman culture. Traveling in England and Scotland, uh, she, was, uh, she was also impressed by monuments that could be connected with pre-Roman culture of Europe. Uh, she was so touched by, uh, by the immensity and secret singularity of Stonehenge interpreted uh, by her as a druid, druid's temple, uh, temple that in aim to keep this memory, uh, the memory of this deep emotion, she decided to take a small fragment of stone which was later on display in Puave. The same kind of emotion made her collect in England the grass at the site of the former Roman camp later on the exposition uh, in Puave. As, as a result of such attitude, her collection was dominated by souvenir of little uh, uh, material value, but of immense sentimental worth. Czartoryska, apart her own collected artifacts, benefit from the help of many people's members of family and friends. Uh, Adam uh, Jerzy Czartoryski sent her specimen of famous buildings in Rome as a capital on Pantheon, Monuments from Campanian towns were offered by her daughter. Some objects from Turkey were donated by Franciszek Sapieka, while Wacław Żewuski offered small uh, uh, sculpture from Palmyra. But besides mementos of famous uh, uh, people and events, a very important role was played by, uh, by pieces from Roman Western provinces, uh, Gallia and Germania, or Belgium and Germany. Uh, there were result of exploration activity of General uh, Michał Sokolnicki, uh, who during his travel collected different uh, ancient examples from a beautiful of, uh, piece of Roman concrete uh, to beds from the place where uh, Varus perished, as well as many uh, bronzes, figurine vases, fragments of armor or jewelry. Together with the Roman object with England, they represent the first tangible evidence of the interest of uh, archaeology of Roman provinces. Why the idea of Roman, uh, 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 the idea of such emotion came from directly from England and uh, Romantic era, the musealization of the collection followed the French model, represented by the Musée des Monuments Français, headed by Alexandre Lenoir. Uh, who arranged the exhibition and was the author of the numerous catalog. According to that model, uh, uh, Czartoryska opened the collection in the Gothic house to public, and at the same time she was working on cataloging uh, displayed uh, artifacts. She was, uh, okay. uh, she was the author of several catalogs, uh, including uh, uh, the monumental one in French in three volumes. Uh, a few uh, years later, uh, its short version was published with basic information about the artifacts. To emphasize the educational role of exposition, Czartoryska herself prepared uh, the information card that were attached of the monuments exhibited inside the Gothic house, uh, as we can see here. As a conse consequence of the fall of the November uprising, uh, the, the residence in Puave was confiscated and the collection was dispersed, then was transferred to Paris, uh, now in Czartoryski Museum in, Kra in Krakow. Uh, just few uh, modest artifacts testify the nucleus of the uh, entire collection. Uh, to summarize. Uh, what's the idea of this collection, why uh, this uh, collection is so significant for Polish culture. Czartoryska did not pay attention to the material value of the monuments, but each uh, of them was a pretext for a deeper reflection uh, upon the past. So her collection was built from the start as to play to informative educational role, and from the beginning was accessible to a broader uh, public. It is worth to appreciate the manner of exhibition with informative cards or inscription in the wall. 
Uh, what merits attention is the content of the collection, which included archaeological objects from province, uh, both Roman and true Roman. Finally, the Park of Isabella, just last word, uh, last, um, uh, yeah, last words. Finally, the Park of uh, Isabella Czartoryska in Puławy was one of the major venue for enthusiasts of antiquity in Poland in the early 19th century. Antiquity represented by neoclassical buildings alluding to ancient architecture structured there by faithful imitation of Greek and Roman monuments as well as collection of antiquities created a convenient atmosphere for arts and literature flourishing. Puławy fully, therefore, Puławy fully deserved to be called Polish uh, Athens. Such atmosphere was favorable as well for the entertainment as to be seen on the painting of Norblin uh, Rodenev uh, the Satyr. Uh, thereby, Norblin immortalized the festivity in honor of Louis de Prus, uh, wife of uh, Prussia, uh, of uh, Antony uh, Radziwiłł, during which, uh, during which uh, dear gentlemen and ladies were prancing Atlantic at the entrance of the grotto. The French poet Delisle. Uh, describe this then exactly as, uh, as if he saw it. Thank you. Thank you.